Physical excellence does not of itself produce a good mind and character. On the other hand, excellence of mind and character will make the best of the physique it is given. The thoughts you choose are molding you. As well hidden as you assume your thoughts to be, they are building the interior and exterior of your being. Your thoughts are not something that can be concealed from the world. Your physical attributes are largely influenced by your mental attributes. This is a well-studied branch of knowledge that has existed throughout the ages and has only in the last century been rejected by mainstream thought. The study of physiognomy. That of learning a person's inner landscapes through the indications of their outer appearance. I won't argue its validity here, but I will say that humans and animals use the underlying principles of physiognomy unconsciously in their everyday dealings with people. The expression, don't judge a book by its cover, perhaps comes to mind. But we must ask why would this expression exist in the first place if it is not to indicate some natural instinct that humans draw from to form judgment, to judge a book by its cover. That seems to be hardwired inside of us all. Forming ideas and emotions about others based on sensory cues. When humans or animals are choosing potential mates and friendships, one's appearance gives us much biological and social information that will influence our decision to pursue that relationship or not. Not only does one's appearance reveal much about their state of health, in many cases, we may get a glimpse into one's character and disposition via their appearance. A person feeding off of negative thoughts tends to appear negative. A person with evil intentions oftentimes can find themselves betrayed by their own appearance as we get clues to the other's intention via visual cues. Conversely, a good-hearted caring person will usually have that trait reflected in their face and expression. Our brains are amazing at picking up the small details of people that give us emotional responses to our interactions that we may not even be able to rationally explain. These flashes of intuition guide us greatly on making the decision to who we choose to interact with. Why does your character matter? Is it something to be changed? Or should we allow our character to flourish naturally and allow it to act on its own inclinations, be that good or bad. It is said that our conscious being exists within the universe, but if our mind is an object interpreting external stimuli, then is it not the universe that exists within our conscious being? If our sense perception begins with our mind, then is the universe not existing within our minds? The universe exists not as an independent body, but as an interaction with our being, our consciousness, and without the presence of this consciousness, matter has no need to take physical form. It remains in a state of unexpressed potentiality. In scientific terms, it is a state known as quantum superposition. Our consciousness and the universe we experience are a pairing that seem to rely on each other to exist. Without consciousness, there is no universe. The entire manifestation of all we sense is occurring through the internal recesses of our mind. It is not that you are seeing the trees unadulterated without interference. It is that your mind is being fed data that translates that information into what we know as trees. We could be receiving a complex sequence of zeros and ones for all we know that our brain is computing into the sequence of images we call trees, into the experiences we call life. We do not definitively know the source of this raw data that is creating what we see and feel as the universe. As philosopher Gilbert Harmon theorized, we may be nothing more than a brain in a vat. A brain connected up to a computer receiving data that we assume to be the real reflection of the reality we are experiencing. We can never be sure from our position that this isn't the case. I illustrate this idea not to go down the road of what is reality, 
but to highlight just how instrumental a role our mind plays in shaping this universe we are now immersed in. Your mind is not merely a participator in this universe. It is an essential component for the universe's existence. The way in which we interpret the signals reality feeds us will determine the experiences we have. This character we choose to embody, the lens we choose to see the world through, is a choice that can literally change the architecture of this reality we exist in. The way in which we choose to see things is referred to as our perspective. Your attitude to your life, your perspective, matters infinitely more to this universe than what we call objective reality. Nothing here is objective. Written in the early 1900s, that circumstances grow out of thought every man knows who has for any length of time practiced self-control and self-purification. For he will have noticed that the alteration in his circumstances has been an exact ratio with his altered mental condition. So true is this that when a man earnestly applies himself to remedy the defects in his character and makes swift and marked progress, he passes rapidly through a succession of vicissitudes. The soul attracts that which it secretly harbors, that which it loves, and also that which it fears. It reaches the height of its cherished aspirations. It falls to the level of its unchastened desires, and circumstances are the means by which the soul receives its own. Every thought seed sown or allowed to fall into the mind and to take root there produces its own blossoming sooner or later into act and bearing its own fruitage of opportunity and circumstances. The world encourages us to see our existence from the perspective of an infinitely small observer in an infinitely large universe without any real influence over the whole whatsoever. Many times you may have heard expressions about the universe's infinite vastness and man's cosmic insignificance, encouraging you to believe that you are a meaningless grain of sand in an ocean of space. This is a train of thought that will rob you of the potential power inherent within you. Your path in life is etched from your character. The way in which you view life dictates the type of life you will lead. Seeds of thought germinate into the structure of the reality you experience. More than external circumstance, it is your character and approach to your life that will unravel the outcome and reveal your destiny. Your circumstances will only limit you if you believe that they will. Be cautious of your chosen beliefs. Regardless of whether they are actually true or not, your mind will make the utmost effort to materialize those beliefs into your existence. Some of the most successful people on this earth came from nothing. Their lives weren't merely an inheritance. Their success was a statement of their character. We are constantly absorbing the environment. Our body works as a receptacle for all that we have experienced and have interacted with. We exist as walking representations of our life in physical form. All the people we talk with, the videos we watch, the philosophies we adopt, the books we read, the foods we eat, the physical environment that we inhabit, everything we come into contact with colors our state of being in profound ways. They are painted onto our faces. Our brain, our heart, the nervous system, our organs, the cells in our body, everything is influenced by experience. Even if we reject one form of stimuli, it helps reinforce the opposing idea, and our rejection thus serves the same purpose of molding us further into a particular direction. As a result, the thoughts and ways in which we live and things we choose to expose ourselves to manifest themselves into physical reality, into the person we are today. Character is destiny itself. As a fixed combination of deeds, it bears within itself the results of those deeds. 
these results lie hidden as moral seeds in the dark recesses of the character, awaiting their season of germination, growth and fruitage. Be very aware of the thoughts you entertain. They in time become the essence of who you are. We may see thoughts as objects in a box that we can keep closed away from the world, yet they are more akin to seeds in the dirt, slowly growing into the being that you'll ultimately become. Engaging in violent activities will bring you into a life of violence. Engaging in criminal activities will bring you into a life of crime. Engaging in good deeds and lovingness will bring you into a life of love and good fortune. This is simple enough yet often disregarded when one makes their day-to-day -day choices in life. We are all walking down a hallway where every decision reveals a staircase going up or going down. Towards the higher realms and energies, love, compassion, calm spirits, or towards the lower realms, the animal energies, physical desire, lust, anger, hate. The staircase we choose alters the trajectory of our journey. It is these very choices we decide upon that are creating our reality in which we inhabit. We are constantly choosing new doors to walk through, which lead to new rooms and eventually a new life. These doors or choices are said to be connected to our next incarnation. The energies we consolidate in this life directing us to the vessel of our next life. It is of the highest importance that we do our best to move towards the higher energies. For the most part, we move unconsciously through these doors, unaware of just how deeply each choice of thought is affecting our reality and destiny. What we are discussing here is the immutable law of cause and effect. Thoughts mold the direction of our future, and the quality of thoughts will dictate the quality of existence. If we become aware of the importance of our own thoughts over the physical world, we can understand how to better control circumstance in our life. We become able to manipulate the very fabric of our reality. These laws of cause and effect have been written about extensively by the ancients. It is the fundamental principle of the age-old concept of karma. Written in 1910, the root meaning of the word karma is action, and as every action contains inherently its coming effect, we thus get at its second meaning, and it is in this sense that the word is most frequently used and so we frame a general working definition of karma. It is the law of cause and effect, absolutely inviolable in the mental, moral and material worlds. Being so, it is infallibly the means by which we reap as we sow, so that no good deed can escape its reward, and no evil deed its fit penalty. By this law, our present character and development are the exact products of our past evolution from an embryonic and potential state through numerous and varied states and experiences. It follows, therefore, that our future is in our own hands, now to make or mar. This is a great fact to be cognizant of, and a mere knowledge of this law is sufficient to change our view of life and evolution. The secret within this knowledge may be thought of as follows. Take responsibility for your character and your character will take responsibility for your destiny. As many others focus on the end point and doing anything it takes to get there, they may often neglect their fellow man and act only in self-interest and against moral principle. Such a frame of mind ignores a simple truth, that we are all connected all from the same source, and that any selfish act committed against our fellow man is inevitably committed against ourselves. When you act out of selfish impulse to benefit yourself over somebody else, you're injuring yourself far worse than the benefit to be gained from that deed. Our being is very much moulded by our deeds, and through our chosen path of goodwill or selfishness, our fate will be determined. 
The concept that a clean room makes a clear mind is very true. The environment of your physical world shapes the environment of your interior world. Every man's work, whether it be literature or music or pictures or architecture or anything else, is always a portrait of himself. And the more he tries to conceal himself, the more clearly will his character appear in spite of him. We are walking representations of all that we have experienced and interacted with. It shows in our face, our bodies and in our character. It is imprinted into your aura. Your aura is not just an abstract word used by the mystics. It is a very real field that is generated from the magnetic energy of your heart. This energy is felt by those around you at varying levels. With every beat, the heart not only pumps blood, but also transmits complex patterns of neurological, hormonal, pressure and electromagnetic information to the brain and throughout the body. As a critical nodal point in many of the body's interacting systems, the heart is uniquely positioned as a powerful entry point into the communication network that connects body, mind, emotions and spirit. Your aura conveys much nonverbal information to others that mere language is unable to convey. When we meet someone for the first time and we start assessing their compatibility to us, many times we sense a strong connection or feeling of harmony. Also, in other cases, we may feel a sense of repulsion to their energy or feel something that is a red flag. Such feelings are often difficult to put into words as they come from our deepest instincts rather than from rational observation. Things that have happened in your life become etched into you and are detectable by others around you. You may not even realize it most of the time. Others can sense nonverbal information about us through their nervous system. We can many times sense danger or instability in an individual. An intuitive feeling that our nervous system picks up on to warn us. These intuitive impulses act out of self-preservation to alert and protect us from potential dangers. There is now evidence that a subtle yet influential electromagnetic or energetic communication system operates just below our conscious awareness. Energetic interactions possibly contribute to the magnetic attractions or repulsions that occur between individuals and also affect social relationships. It was also found that one person's brainwaves can synchronize to another person's heart. Humanity operates as a continually self-organizing process, and this is why certain entities with shared values and energies will gravitate towards one another, whilst entities of opposing values and energy will likely be repelled. We see this process of organization so often on the individual level that we even have formed many such common use expressions in the English language. Real recognize real, and like attracts like, birds of a feather flock together, and so on. We must be lucid to the fact that our thoughts ultimately manifest themselves physically. Thoughts form character, which form associations, which form circumstance, and ultimately form your destiny. One fundamental principle of good character is to not see our inherited disadvantages as obstacles in our life but to develop the vision to see all negative aspects as something we must remedy in ourselves. As Seneca once wrote, For what else are you busied with except improving yourself every day, laying aside some error and coming to understand that the faults which you attribute to circumstances are in yourself? We are indeed apt to ascribe certain faults to the place or to the time, but those faults will follow us no matter how we change our place. Every perceived disadvantage we have been given in life carries with it an underlying benefit available to only those perceptive enough to see it. 
We can always use a negative condition to our advantage if we are able to recognize what advantages are included in this perceived negative. In many cases, a man who becomes blind gains an exceptional auditory sense which far exceeds his fellow man's ability. With his developed sense of impeccable hearing, he can go forth to create great work in this world. The developed sensitivity of one sense due to the lack of another can be honed into a superpower. The advantage provided must be realized. Perhaps it is not the most desirable condition, yet it is one's response to the condition that will determine whether it's of benefit or of misfortune. It is not the external condition, but the internal perception that paves the way. A person who can find the seeds of good within any given ordeal or disaster is practicing good character and thus moving towards the path of good fortune. Try this mode of thinking for yourself. Think of a recent perceived negative experience in your life. Go through that experience and see if you can find some seeds of fortune within that experience. They are most definitely there if you search for them. Think through the negative and flip it. Find the threads of opportunity that lie within your perceived problem. You will always find that when one door closes, another door opens. This is a golden skill. Not many people are capable of this, and you may be reluctant, but try sincerely to find out just how much of an opportunity you can gain from your recent hardship. Within that hardship, no matter what it is, lies a seed of opportunity. Can you find it? Once you find the benefits, snap your fingers in that instant, wholeheartedly decide to change your mind. It was a blessing in disguise. This situation and my response to it is leading me to the fortune I am seeking. It was a door that had to close so that the door I'm seeking could be opened. Simply believe in this. I assure you it is true. Much of man's greatness and achievements have been forged through pain and misfortune. Painful experience is in many instances the necessary catalyst to push someone into the realms of greatness. One's response to adversity when it hits will ultimately dictate the truth of their character. Welcome adversity with open arms. Embrace it. A person with good character is wise enough to see the lessons in their misfortune and to use it as fuel to keep going. To shoulder hardship willingly and appreciate the lessons and experience it provides. As the old proverb goes, out of the hottest fire comes the strongest steel. It is the misfortune that will bring you fortune, that will forge your character, that will strengthen your will and ability to overcome any obstacle for the sake of your life's purpose. Instead of wishing for softer circumstances, wish to strengthen yourself. Adversity is your teacher. Strive to become stronger. Softer circumstances inevitably make one softer. The Stoics used to practice voluntary discomfort to prepare themselves for adversity, to deeper appreciate what they have and ultimately to make themselves stronger and more comfortable with discomfort. Upon retirement of work life, many have undergone the fast decline in mental faculties and physical health. An early retirement leading to an early death. It is a tendency reported by many the world over particularly in men. Studies have indicated a more rapid decline upon early retirees compared to their later retiring counterparts. And from such a phenomenon, we can see the life extending benefits of work. At dawn, when you have trouble getting out of bed, tell yourself, I have to go to work as a human being. What do I have to complain of if I'm going to do what I was born for? The things I was brought into this world to do? Or is this what I was created for, to huddle under the blankets and stay warm? When life becomes painful and difficult to bear, step back. Realize this is all theater. 
you have a front row seat to this theatre you chose to come and see. There are characters, plot lines, story arcs, bad guys and good guys, a fluctuating storyline of fortunate and misfortunate events occurring oftentimes without any action on your own part. It is all happening in front of your eyes as you participate as a character in this story. You are in the middle of this whole affair. You don't have the knowledge of how to get to Earth, yet somehow you came here. Isn't it amazing? You are unable to build a pair of lungs, yet you have a pair of lungs that you built. You don't know the mechanics of the heart pumping blood, yet you, your body, created one and carry out its function so seamlessly without thought and have been doing so your whole life. All these tools that allow you to exist in the physical realm are vastly beyond your own avatar's current level of comprehension, yet they have been gifted to you to navigate through this reality. When we see the extent and scale in which we are being supported in this life, that things are moving along just perfectly, accomplishments, tragedies and all, we can relax a little and just go along with the course of things. By not worrying what will happen to us, we free up energy to care about the well-being of others, and paradoxically, this concern for others will help us in finding our own way and achieving what we are here to do in this lifetime. I hope this isn't all getting too spiritual and metaphysical. To put simply, love thy neighbor, care about others, all of the pain and anguish going through you is not being broadcast to the world, so imagine that even the ones closest to you may be going through such hardships, or even worse, without you knowing a thing about them. It is not your job to find those things out, but you have the opportunity to make their life more pleasant and worth living. To show even a little love can bring someone back from the depths of despair that they may be experiencing. To brighten someone's day who has spent the night steeped in dark thoughts and sadness. To show love to your fellow human who may have felt that not a single soul cared for their existence. The ones you love and care for will someday die. And if you're still here, you will look back on all those interactions you had with them and wonder if you had given them the love and support they so very much needed. There are still people around you now Provide them with the love and support that they need. Offer them your undivided attention. Offer your ear if they wish to speak to you and realize how special they are. Life is very fragile and can be taken at any time. This deep respect for life is what will develop your good character. Look after each other with the knowledge that the world is looking after you.